You know, I'm very grateful that you have joined this study because I get the privilege of sharing with you the greatest concept that I've learned in over eight years of my own research center of what makes an awesome marriage, a very satisfying marriage. And that is, if you provide security for your mate, you're going to notice that naturally your relationship grows deeper and you're more in love. It's like becoming best friends naturally. So I'm going to give you three ways that will build security into your marriage. And then I want you to know that since this is the overriding concept of this entire study, all five promises that I give you help you develop a more secure marriage. Oh, I wish I was with you in this study to learning this stuff with you. And I just want to say God bless you. Well, I'm very excited to be with you and to join you in this study. Uh, some of the greatest things that I've learned in the last several years have literally changed my life, changed my marriage. And so I'm just thrilled to share that with you and join with you in this experience. You know, many of you might have heard or know that I had a heart attack three years ago and uh, my cardiologist didn't understand why I made it through. Uh, but because of the heart attack, I, they think I lost my kidneys, they start dying. And so I got to a certain level where my son tested uh, perfect for me. So my 31-year-old son gave me his kidney, which I'm thrilled that he did, gave me life. He says it's the gift that keeps on giving. And uh, of course, I changed my will, so he has a lot more than the others do. But, but anyway, uh, uh, it, that's a thrilling experience. In fact, I've actually said to my children now for the last several months, it's been a privilege to raise you, especially for body parts. So, uh, but I'm just thrilled to be alive, and, and I feel like God's, uh, you know, resurrected me. And this very first session is the greatest secret to a satisfying marriage, to a, to a connected relationship in marriage where you really uh, feel um, alive and you're excited about being married to this person. In fact, this first session is the theme of the entire study, and everything else we teach supports this first session. 911, what's your emergency? Yeah, someone's in my home. Okay. My husband's gone. I'm by myself. Please help. That happened to my wife a year and a half ago. An overdosed neighbor jumped off his balcony of his house, broke his leg near the ankle, dragged his foot across the street, dived through my garage window, and uh, splattered against the glass and cut himself all up and bleeding from his leg, and walked into my home from the inside garage door and terrorized my wife for 20 minutes because I was gone. She was alone. And he made it to the master bedroom at one point, and so for 20 minutes, the police, the backup police didn't show up, but the first policeman showed up in three minutes, but they couldn't go in because they didn't know how many were there. And so she had to endure that and stayed on the line, the 911 operator, the entire time until they finally arrested him. But here's the problem, and this is actually the, the deadbolt that I purchased. She asked me, if I would put a deadbolt on the garage door inside the garage that goes into the home. And I said, oh, sure. And then she said, we ought to hire somebody to put, uh, you know, to put this on. And uh, I said, <laughs> <laughs> I can do this, you know? So I got my drill out and drilled this big hole in it. And you know, another thing, nothing fit. And I thought, I don't get this. So, you know, I, I uh, okay, I bought a new door and we hired somebody, but, but the, <laughs> but, the point is, I didn't do it. And this guy easily entered my home because they didn't have this on. And I'm sick about it because it was so, you know, what a simple thing to do, you know, if you understand how to do it, but I didn't get it. And I didn't do it. And I didn't even hire anybody because we live in a pretty, you know, crime-free area. And so I didn't expect this to happen. And, uh, but now, now I realize that 
This illustrates the most important concept that you can have in your marriage. And what it is is that since this has happened, my own son, from my own marriage research center, my son, Dr. Greg Smalley, runs it along with Dr. Bob Paul. And they discovered this secret that if you have a secure marriage, that you have the best kind of, you give, the, that's like having the best soil prepared for the best garden. It's the best thing you and I can do. In fact, let me explain it. Dr. Alan Shore, who is a neuroscientist from UCLA, neuroscientists like this all over the world have now discovered that there's a major section of our brain that's been wired by God, DNA, genetic structure, that hungers to be connected with another human being from the moment you're born. Part of the crying is not just for food. Part of the crying of a baby is to connect with mom and dad and relatives and brothers and sisters, people. Because if you don't connect with somebody, then that section of the brain actually is damaged and the DNA of that part of the brain is literally changed. And they, if they live, many of them don't, they have a problem the rest of their life with relationships. So built within us is the, is the, the desire our entire life at all ages to want to connect with somebody else. In fact, that's the reason you wanted to connect with your mate. And uh, why your kids want to connect to friends and why you wanted to when you were a kid. And, and you'll always want to connect unless you're just so beat up and so discouraged about people and so fearful that you can't do it. But that's a very damaging thing to your body. It shortens your life 500% more likely to get a major disease. There's lots of problems when, we don't, when we're not in relationships. But because it's a natural driven thing. Watch how powerful this is. If you feel like you want to be connected to someone like you did your mate, then if they are safe, and they make you feel secure, you will automatically be attracted to them and you will automatically open up and share your heart with them. And in fact, let me just ask you a question. I'm just going to ask it of the ladies here, but how would you love to be married to a man who lovingly talked to you and shared his feelings and never criticized you and never, uh, never wanted to change you and just, you know, was thrilled with who you are and where you are. How many of you would like that, okay? All right. How many of you guys would like that? <laughs> to be married to a woman like that, okay? We all would. Everybody that's in our study is going to want that too, okay? But just listen to this. You create a secure relationship Put a security relationship in your home. It's like installing a love security system. And you will have what you dream. Naturally, automatically. Just think of this. Automatic intimacy and best friend comes out of living with somebody who you feel safe with. And if you're both safe and you feel secure, then it just happens naturally because God designed our brain like that. So that's what's wonderful. So you don't even really have to have all the marriage training if you just work on this first one. That's what, this is why this is so super important. So I want to give you today three ways to build a secure marriage, okay? So you can start today. Number one, you got to create safety. Years ago when my kids were younger, now I understand why this story was so meaningful to me years ago. I drove into my driveway and I was tired already. I had my son Greg, he was about 12, and there was our mini motorhome parked at an angle. And my wife had just gone to the grocery store and she sheared off a big section of the roof and uh, put a big hole in the motorhome and it's all over the driveway, okay? So when I pulled into the driveway, do you think my attitude immediately was safe? No. What I wanted to do was criticize my wife. I wanted to say, don't you realize there's a speed limit in the driveway? You know, or just, you know, anything critical. Because I wanted to change her. I wanted to get her more responsible about her driving, okay? And so what I want to do now is reverse the times that I wasn't safe. But this time, by the grace of God, I was. And so when I pulled in there and I was critical, I, I thought, ooh, I'm going to see her any second, I'm going to see her any second, what am I going to say, what am I going to say? I'm saying this out loud. And my son Greg says, Dad, why don't you say what you teach? I said, smart aleck. 
And then I said, what do I teach? Because when you're all upset, you can't remember what you teach, okay? So he said, Dad, Mom's a lot more important than campers and roofs and other people and things. And you're right. So I thought, okay, she's more important than this campers, she's more important than this roof. I got, I got to, so I got out of the car, I started walking towards her, and she came running around the side of the house, you know, crying, you know. And I just put my arms around her. Because when you put your arms around someone, you're not critical. I used to think that when somebody's down, that's the time to criticize them. Because now they're open to change. <laughs> Hey, the worst thing you and I could do is to criticize somebody, period, anyway. Because what you and I have to do is put a deadbolt lock on our mouth and our actions. And here's what I'm saying. You got to stop today being critical. You got to stop today judging, condemning. Those anger bursts all over them. So they, sometimes they walk around on like eggshells. They don't, they don't feel comfortable. They don't feel safe. You're ruining your marriage if your mate doesn't feel safe. And so it has to stop. The judgment, the belittling, all that stuff. Now, some of the rest of the sessions, I'm going to teach you how to do that. But if you understand that it has to stop because you're creating an unsafe place and your mate's going to put a wall up, guaranteed, Maybe a paper one at first, but eventually if you keep being unsafe, it'll be, a, it'll be a stone wall, castle. And so that is so important. Well, while I was holding her, she said, you know, I could have been nonverbal, you know, and she would have known that, you know, I was upset, you know, because I want God's love to flow through me. And, and uh, you know what's really amazing? Why are we safe to go with God and tell God our heart and open our heart and become best friends with God because he's safe. He's merciful. He's forgiving. He doesn't judge us. You know, he's always forgiving. Every day is new. You know, he's our, you know, he's our, you know, rear, you know, guard. He's our front shield. He's everything to us. And so love is safe, actually. And 1 Corinthians 13, the whole thing is all about safety when you look at it. So, well, I was holding her, and she was saying, oh, I feel so terrible, and she was crying. She said, look at the roof and the camper, and I know the money it's going to cost. And she said, and, I, and incidentally, I told the neighbors across the street, you know, what I did, and they're watching you right now to see what you're going to do. <laughs> Thank God I was holding her. You're not, okay. So why did I do that? Because number two, first one is safe. Number two, honor. Security is honor. Security is lifting your maid up. They're worth a $10 million. They're more than a $10 million stone. They're so valuable. But here's what I've been learning, and I love learning this. What I'm learning is that, is that God highly values my mate. Me too, but my mate. So I've been reading, and I have a list in your study guide of how much God loves your mate. I want you to just do a fraction of what God does, and that'll be sufficient. But I want to keep loving my mate and honoring my mate as much as God does. But here's the key. He has continual valuable thoughts about your mate all day long, and he says, it's more than the sands of the sea. Whoa. My God highly values my wife and your mate. And then... I love this. He hides your mate in his heart. He doesn't just hide anything in his heart. He's got to be very valuable. Hide your mate in his heart. I want to hide my mate in my heart. I want to hide the value of my mate in my heart. My mate is so valuable. Here's what's really exciting. The more it seeps into your heart that your mate is very valuable, the more that happens, you're going to naturally be more affectionate, naturally be safer, naturally be honoring them in various things you can do. For example, I used to jump out of bed in the morning and, and give my wife a standing ovation, you know, because she's very valuable. Or I could do this. I did this. I do this still, but I did it all my life to my wife. And sometimes I get down on my knees and go, oh, I can't believe I'm with such a valuable person. I've done that with my children my whole life. There's a lot of things you can do. Hug a person, that kind of thing. In fact, for 13 seconds, let's practice that. Because right now it may not be real, but the more the value of your mate seeps into your heart, it will be real.
But let's just practice. You can do any one of them. You can do this, you can go oh, like this, you can clap, you can, you know, stand up, you can do whatever you want. We'll all do it together, all right? And if you're not married, just do it to somebody in the room because everybody's valuable, all right? So, okay, so. So, because there'll be singles, and there are singles in our small groups, which I love, because they get a chance to interact, you know, before they marry. So, anyway, honoring is just so important. Safety, honor's all part of safety. And then the last one that's so crucial is recognizing that I want to be totally committed to my mate. Dr. Scott Stanley from Denver University describes commitment in a marriage as it's two, way, two sides to it. The first side is you actually design a contract. This is a marriage contract, marriage constitution, okay? And what this is, is my written agreement with my wife, because she and I developed it together, of how we're going to love each other for the rest of our life. It's, it's, it's actually this very session. So it's the preamble, security, and then it's all five of the promises. And here's what's really exciting. You get to write your own constitution in your small group. And so each week, you can make it one of the articles. You can either use mine, or you can write your own. I'd rather have you write your own. And then when it's finished, you actually have like an attorney notarize it or a judge or somebody, you know, the elder of your church or some famous person, whatever. And then you frame it, put it on the wall. Here's the great thing about having it on the wall. It reminds you all the time because you get to see it. It's like the policeman in your home because it's like the Constitution in America. I mean, it governs our behavior. And then your kids get to see how mom and dad are planning to stay together the rest of their life. So it's very, very important. So you can use mine or you can make your own, but uh, it gets developed, and that's part of your homework in your small group. But then the other side is another part of commitment. This is pretty kind of exciting because I've done this. My wife and I have done this. You make a list as long as you want, and I have samples in your study guide, of all the reasons why you can't separate and divorce. And there are lots of reasons. There are lots of books that totally dedicated themselves just to why you can't get divorced, why you shouldn't get divorced. For example, you lose like 90% of your net worth after you divorce. You're both economically less, you know, uh, capable of living the way you did when you were married. And uh, shortens your life. 10% for women, 23% for men. And the reason men is that we do more dangerous things than you do, especially when we're single. And so uh, uh, you're twice as happy when you stay married. And if you make it through five years, the, the research shows that the couples that went through those five years and wanted a divorce and made it, they're thrilled they didn't do it. They didn't divorce. So, but now again, if you've already divorced, start from today. Just start doing this in your current marriage and, and start creating the safety and the things I'm gonna to talk to you in the rest of this, con this, uh, this study. And so, but just make the list. And I have them in your study, you'll see them, but you can add to it because commitment is the positive way you're gonna to stay together and the negative things that would happen. So that's like constraints, keeps you from doing it. There's a lot of reasons, okay? So I'd love to have us pray together, okay? Let's just do that. Father, I pray that you will bless every couple involved in this study, every couple here. Lord, that you would inspire them, fill them with your power to realize that you designed them for marriage. Marriage, marriage is your idea. And you designed us for this. And so you give us the best, your best. And I would love to ask you, as our heads are bowed, how many of you would say, Gary, I want to join you. I want to join you and Norma, your wife. And I want to commit to my wife today that I'm going to build a secure home, a secure marriage, so that she will be or he will be naturally attracted to me, open up, and we can have this kind of marriage we've always dreamed of. And the more security we have, the easier that is. If you feel that today, and you feel led by God to do that, I'd just love to have you lift your hand and say, Gary, I'll join you. I want to be a part of that. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Father, you know our heart. And again, I just ask you to bless us richly. In your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. All right. So, thank you. I know you saw the importance of creating security in your marriage. So, I'd just love to have you discuss two very important questions. Uh, number one, I want you to write out and then discuss with your mates and in front of the group, I feel the most secure when my mate does dot, dot, dot. Okay. Because he or she may not know what really makes you feel secure. And then secondly, equally important, I feel the most unsafe when you do or say dot, 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 whatever that is. Because, see, you're in the environment of a safe place. And now is the time to be able to open up and share these things in front of the others because this is where it's most effective. So again, God bless you in your discussion.